Hi, my name is Jay Warren Norris from Tell It Like It Is. I'm the author of Live a More Excellent Life, the creator of the Insuperable Boot Camp, and the Nine Lessons of Mastery to Live a More Excellent Life, which is a mentoring program we use in high schools. Today I want to talk to parents more directly than what I normally do, and the reason for that is I am a father of four. We have three teenagers, uh, one transitioning out of home, two that still live at home, and one who is in her early 20s already, mother of one with another one on the way. But we also have about I don't know, a dozen kids that call us mom and dad because of the impact that we've had on their lives over the many years that we've been together. My wife and I will be married 19 years uh, this coming year and uh, really looking forward to that 20th anniversary when we fly off to Chile and stay in the uh, hotel over the waterfalls. But what I want to talk to you about today are the three situations or, or emotional states that our kids find themselves in throughout the course of their life. And really it starts with an attitude. The attitude that we see pervasive in our culture today and society and everything from video games to the way that we treat them on the soccer field to even our new government policy, some of the things that are being changed really contribute to an attitude of what I would call entitled. And by that I simply mean if they show up on the soccer field they expect to get a new ribbon or a trophy or something of that nature. And that attitude of entitlement means no matter what you do they expect something else, they expect more, they expect it again and again. And the challenge we find with that is that the idea of hard work is really hard for them to comprehend. Even if they do put in the hard work, sometimes the reward expectation on the other side is completely different. Uh, what we would call the gamification, I've got a great friend named Monica Cornetti who teaches on the gamification process and how that affects our, our thought processes even in the career fields. Uh, but with our kids what it means is we have a, a really high level of kids who are on games, on video games on a regular basis and in those video games they play a game they finish a level, and whether they win that level or they don't win that level, there's an award system. Uh, there's one video game that I play from time to time that I know my kids are into, it, and, and that's how I got hooked on it. And in that particular game, even if I fail the level, all of the points that I earned in that level, I still get to keep them. All of the little awards along the sides, like the magic and things of that nature that come with winning that level, I get to keep them even if I fail the level. So every time I start over on that level, I get to keep all of the brownie points that I got while playing. Well, that's just not realistic in life. Most of the time, if you fail a test or you fail a, an exam or you fail at your job, you don't get to keep the job and ali ali oxen free start all over again. When you fail, you lose. Now, there are ideas about failure that we have to be realistic about and realize that many times failure leads further down the road to success than just succeeding so easily. But the challenge between the two is we've got to fail and learn rather than fail and quit. We've also got to be able to set up our children for success by understanding that everything won't be handed to them along the way. The challenge is when they don't get those awards, when they don't get the brownie button, when they don't get the trophy just for showing up on the soccer field, when they go to work on their first job, whether it's part-time at McDonald's before they get out of school or right out of college they go into their first career field, and there are statistics that would boggle the mind on the number of kids who get a college degree and expect year one to be making sixty or seventy thousand dollars and instead they're working at nine dollars ten dollars an hour in a job it's more than forty percent of young people coming out of college so how do we set them up for success so that they aren't overwhelmed when they come out of school and find themselves failing again and again at their relationships failing again and again at their tests or their job opportunities because they weren't prepared for that so the first word that i want to talk about is overwhelmed. Many of our kids today are overwhelmed. That's why we see the high rates of suicide that we do in teens. We see kids who have given up on the hope of strong relationships. They've given up on their education. They've given up on their teachers. A lot of them feel like their friends or their family have given up on them as well. And they're completely overwhelmed with the amount of homework, the number of tasks that they're expected to do in their homework. In addition to that, they have sports. They have Facebook. They have Twitter. They have LinkedIn. They have email addresses. All of these things that consume their time and their mind and everything seems to move a million miles an hour. Every decision has to be made right now, and so the consequences don't seem nearly as high. I mean, look at the video games some of them play where they kill somebody and then realize they didn't kill as many people as they needed to, and they start over. Now, in the graphic game, they've been shot in the head. They, they have no hope of surviving, but a reset button changes all that. And so the loss of realistic view of what the world is is really a challenging thing. The scary part of that is when you put that together with being overwhelmed in life, it's not a matter of did I win or lose this level, but if they feel like they can check out and start over, that can reduce, it can come to a tragic end very, very quickly. 
That's not what we want to see for our young people. We want to see them have the strength to not be overwhelmed. We want them to see the tasks that are at hand and be able to prioritize those and put them in their proper place, to properly manage their natural resources of time, talent, treasure, and attention so that when these circumstances come up, they know how to deal with them. The next thing we find is overcome. Many of our young people today have been overcome by tragedies. They've seen their friends commit suicide. They've seen their friends, you know, get involved in drugs or fail a test or drop out of school or damage relationships. They're overcome by the tragedy of a divorce in the family. They're overcome by a loss of a loved one or a loss of a friend who moved away. Those challenges can be very hard as well. The hard part is we can't necessarily undo some of those challenges. Some of those circumstances can't be avoided. A, a drunk driver that hits you in a car accident, you can't stop that from happening necessarily. And there's some, certainly nothing you can do now that it has happened to undo it. The question is, what do you do with it? And the answer is the same as bullying. The answer is the same as when a friend commits suicide. The answer is the same as when your parents go through a divorce. You personally can't undo it. But you have the choice of how you cope with it. What choices will you make in your attitude? What choices will you make in your future? What choices will you make in your relationships that will give you the strength to walk through a situation like that? The next level of this, when you're overcome and overwhelmed kind of scenario that we're building around our children, that we're seeing society build around our children, is that oftentimes they get, they get caught up in this funk, if you will, where everything in life is dark and gray and, and they want to wear the, the goth stuff or they want to talk about suicide or they want to hang out with friends that are completely off the realm or off the scope of what we would consider to be good, solid friendships that are going to push them forward in life. And so what happens is they get caught up in this circle of friends and the scholarship opportunities, the, the, the opportunity to play sports, the opportunity to move on to college with academic excellence or to move on to college with, with sports uh, finesse, all of those things begin to, to escape them. And I call that being passed by. Sadly, when they take an attitude that nothing in my life is going to go the way that I want it to, when they, when they begin to feel like I've been overcome and overwhelmed, and now I'm beginning to see my career choices are passing me by, my educational choices are passing me by, my high school girlfriend is going to pass me by, all of those things become very tragic. Now, in my life, I saw many of those things happen. As a, as a victim of sexual assault at nine years old, my, my parents were divorced when I was four. My stepdad was gone by the time I was ten. We moved to a, a whole new town. We started all over in life. My mom worked 24 hours a day, seven days a week for many years just to keep our family going. We still lived on potato soup and, and food stamps. And it was a tough life growing up for those years. I chose some wrong friends. I made some really bad choices. I ran with the wrong crowd. I chose my girlfriend over scholarship opportunities even when I had achieved excellence in music and physics and speech. I decided to go to school close to home so that I could keep my girlfriend. And when she left me, I gave up on that as well. I had opportunities after I got out of the Air Force to stay in the same career field, and I bounced around job to job to job until I really realized that the whole anchor behind everything was my attitude. And I had to maintain the attitude that my success was up to me. It was up to my strength, it was up to my courage, it was up to my power, it was up to my independence. And what we don't see in our young people today is the willingness to take responsibility for who they are. They want to blame the circumstances on everything that's gone wrong. Believe me, many things have gone wrong in my life. There have been many opportunities to quit, many opportunities to fall back, to give up, to be overwhelmed, to be overcome, and to be passed by. And then I sound, found this very powerful word. It, it's not a made-up word. The word is insuperable. It is a word in the Noah's uh, Webster's Dictionary. I found it in the 1959 edition of the Noah Webster Dictionary. And the word means I, something that is not easily overwhelmed, overcome, or passed by. And when I look back on my life and the decisions that I had made and the tragedies that I allowed to take over my thinking, the relationships that I had crafted, the opportunities that I'd walked away from again and again and again, they were all my choice. And when I realized that, I realized that I had been overcome by choice. I had been overwhelmed by choice. I had been passed by by choice. And so I determined then that I was going to choose a new attitude, that I wanted to become insuperable. I wanted to not be overwhelmed, overcome, or passed by, and that that was my choice. And I set about looking at my 25 years of, of learning up to that point, all of the research that I'd done, all the relationships I'd been engaged in, all the books that I'd been about, and putting together the 12 practices that allowed me to change the direction of my life, to take control, 
to have the power, the courage, and the independence to live the life that I felt I wanted to. You'll find those answers in the book, Live a More Excellent Life, which you can get on Barnes & Noble. You can get it on Amazon. You can walk right into the Barnes & Noble store and they can order it for you right there. Or if you're part of a PTA or you're part of an organization that works with kids and families, I would love to talk with you about the opportunity to partner together. I would love to get this message in the hands of as many teens as possible. Right now we work with one high school that's about 2,500 students. We have 120 volunteer mentors that walk into that school once or twice a month and deliver this information to these kids so that they can learn to become insuperable. They can walk out with a vision for their life and these 12 pillars in their life of strength and courage and independence so they know how to master these circumstances when they come. I'd love to talk to you more about that. You can reach me online at thatguyspeaks.com, and I would love to talk to you about how we can put together a, an insuperable boot camp for your young people, for your school district, for your organization, and do it as a fundraiser for your nonprofit. Please look me up online, shoot me an email at lauren, L-O-R-E-N, at thatguyspeaks.com. Have a great day.